Now, for the next 20 weeks, we're here to assess, test, love, hate, and maybe lick, slightly massage the best and latest tech around. First up, we are talking photography and the moving variety of photography, commonly known as filming, even though we haven't actually used film cameras for years. Good point, Miss Perry. Now, in recent years, the gap that used to exist, the huge chasm of difference between the kit used by the professionals and the kind of stuff that the likes of you and I could buy down the high street, that gap has narrowed to almost nothing. Yeah, so that is why we have sent Otis and Polly to Morocco. Our adventure began with an instruction to meet in the noisy, bustling madness of Morocco's most vibrant and intoxicating city, Marrakesh. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. Peace out. Yeah. Polly. <laughs> okay, yeah, thanks. Polly and Otis, each of you must create a tourism video for Morocco using only consumer technology to film, edit and display your finished work. In two weeks' time, you have to present your work before the head of the Moroccan Tourist Board, who will judge your efforts and declare a winner. Oh, it's, this is serious stuff. Yeah. Hmm. This challenge would reveal just how close consumer tech can get to creating professional-looking videos. That meant a lot of research, so I kicked off by borrowing a projector and a few DVDs. Morocco is a favourite destination for Hollywood filmmakers, and watching their beautifully crafted images made me realise that to win this challenge, not only would I have to find the best consumer kit available, but also some very clever ways to use it. Meanwhile, I'd been looking at some typical tourism videos, but unlike Polly, the big vistas and endless sand dunes bored the pants off me. And don't even get me started on camels. The whole way these things are shot, edited, needs reinvention. Just don't know how yet. Maybe Otis just didn't know where to look. Sites like Vimeo showcase the work of future blockbuster movie makers, who often use the sort of affordable tech I'd have to. So, perhaps I'd stumble across something that was not only interesting, but achievable. That is amazing. And after a while, I did. It's called High Dynamic Range, HDR time-lapse, and it's absolutely incredible. The process involves taking hundreds of high-quality stills, which are shot over a couple of hours, then stitched together to create a moving image, looking like something that could only be shot on a Hollywood mega-budget. Could you imagine that with a beautiful Moroccan backdrop? It would be absolutely stunning. And eventually, I also hit pay dirt, coming across the work of Addictive TV. Wow! <laughs> They are VJs, or video jockeys, who cut up and mix images with distinctive sounds to build up a musical track, like this football trailer, where bouncing balls and kicks turn into thumping beats. So you're seeing and hearing the track. It's an audio-visual extravaganza. But Addictive do much more than produce alternative-style trailers for TV and movies. They also travel the world giving live VJ performances, like sort of audiovisual DJs. Suddenly, I no longer cared what Polly had planned, because not only was I going to film the world's first VJ tourism video, but perform it live as well. My sensory overload slash tourism video slash performance is going to blow her out of the water. By now, I was also ready to start filming. Unlike Polly, though, I could capture all the material I needed right here in Marrakesh. But that didn't make my task any easier. So, for the video to work as an all-in-one audio-visual experience, the picture you're seeing has to identify the sound you're hearing exactly. I've got to get up close and personal. And I'd worked out I'd need around 70 different clips to create my VJ mashup. So, to have any chance of reaching my target, my tech had to be lightweight and portable. A smartphone seemed the answer, and there are many out there that shoot great HD video. But in the end, I chose an iPhone 4. The reason I want to go for this one is because of the increasing range of bolt-on peripherals that are available. For instance, this. Al Bubo mount. The mount allows you to fit this N-Cinema 35mm lens adapter to it, which means you can attach any DSLR lens you want, in this case a Nikon 50mm. Another great thing about the Al mount is it allows me to plug in this Sennheiser mic, because for my video to work, good quality sound will be just as important as the pictures. Yeah? Lights, iPhone, action. 
I hit the central square and started to capture some shots, even if the action I was trying to film sometimes got a bit too close to me. Thank you. OK. I actually got a decent framing in there. The sound is brilliant. And I did all that with a snake round my neck. Is filmed on with his lightweight portable microphone, mount, lens, iPhone construction kit. I'd hit the road for a four hour drive to my next destination. Waz is it. But no sightseeing trip for me because although I was making some progress, I underestimated how long my filming process would actually take. I, I'm nowhere near getting enough clips, nowhere near getting the amount of clips that I want. To get the footage I needed, I'd have to carry on shooting well into the evening. And that's where this should come in handy. It's a rotor light. It should illuminate my subjects and keep them looking funky. As it got dark, I carried on filming with just the occasional breather to join in with the locals. <laughs> However, as midnight approached, I decided to call it a day. So now you know there's pretty much nothing you can't slap onto Look, an iPhone. I think <laughs> this is, it's borderline ridiculous. Yep. And for that reason, I just love it. <laughs> Who in 15 minutes? Track down the one for you with The Gadget Show. Sponsored by Curry's and PC World. And to a task that took Otis and I from the studio here in Birmingham to the majestic mountains, deserts and markets of Morocco. Yes, we'd been sent out there to make the very best video we could using consumer tech to show Morocco in all its majesty and splendour. And I'd gone down the route of Scott, Cameron, Spielberg to use the latest cutting-edge consumer tech, which would hopefully create a cinematic masterpiece. Whereas I'd gone down the route of Rooney G, Betamax and Zebler. What? VJs! Uh, yeah, so I had all my clips together and what I was going to do was perform a live Moroccan mashup in front of our judges. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> But before the presentation day, I still had a lot of editing to do and performing skills to learn, which meant swapping Morocco, Africa for Watford, Hertfordshire. Because along this unassuming suburban street lies the headquarters of Addictive TV, the guys who inspired me to take the VJing approach. Graham and Mark are the masterminds behind the operation. I started by asking them the most important question of all. Okay, boys, I've sent you through some clips. Um, how did I do? No, they're great. They're really great. Some of them, especially like this one, are the guy shaking the coins, because yep. you can use that as, like, the hi-hat. But why it's a really good shot is because you can really clearly see what he's doing. Yep. And so you instantly understand the hi-hat sound comes from a guy chucking change in his hand. That was a relief. Now Addictive's expertise could swing into action. The sound specialist and uses an audio software program called Sony Acid to combine the various audio clips to produce music. The basis of any club track, you want to get a groove. That's, so the, that's the backbone of the that's track. That's the backbone, is, is the groove. While Graham ensured that every sound you hear matches every picture you see. Then, only then, will you get that full visual music flavour. Back in Morocco, my editing was much easier. With my editing now finished... I really like that. I started learning the mixing technique for my live VJ performance. It's the same process DJs use in clubs, combining the sounds from two different decks. The only difference is I'd be mixing sound and vision using DVDs instead of CDs. Missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it! Oh, wrong button! Do that in my presentation and it's all over. <laughs> A few days later, I was back from Morocco so that Otis and I could present our videos to the tourist board representatives. I was up first and as I caught sight of trade marketing manager Mr. Alaoui, the tourist board chief Mr. Kazmi and special guest Mr. Bahajoub, who is editor-in-chief of North and South magazine, I was suddenly very nervous. Poliana, could you please show us your work? What did Polly know about nerves? All she had to do was press the play button.
We'd done all we could. Now it was down to the judges, who promptly left the room for a confidential meeting. In French. After what seemed like ages, they returned. By now, our nerves were in shreds. Well, the two videos are very well made, and I must congratulate you. But I leave the, uh, the announcement of the winner to my colleague, Alec. Oh, okay. And the winner is... Otis. Oh, shukran. <laughs> shukran. 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 It was good. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yes. Oh. Brilliant. Thank you. Well Thank you done, both much. of you. But Otis, what a fabulous, refreshing way of seeing advertising. Thank I think much. that would make you remember Morocco, which is what it's all about. Yeah. Essentially, that diverse visual and oral experience came from your iPhone. That's yeah. remarkable. Mad, isn't it? So you are the first winner. Thank you. Yes, indeed, it's of the series. But that is all we've got time for on this show. But we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.